Zach Galifianakis is the host of Between Two Ferns, which, in case you've been living under a rock, is probably the most unique, uncomfortable, and hilarious talk show of the decade. And while you may have binged every cringeworthy webisode, there are still some things you might not know about everybody's favorite faux public access program. Long before he hosted IFC's surreal, partially scripted talk show Comedy Bang Bang, L.A. comedy scene veteran Scott Ackerman sold a pilot for a late-night sketch comedy series to Fox called The Right Now Show. Ackerman told Splitsider, I just knew I wanted to work with Zach on something, so we had money and I just said, hey, whatever you want to do, let's do. Galifianakis came back, according to Ackerman, with a pretty much fully formed idea for a segment on the pilot, including a title and its look. Galifianakis told Entertainment Weekly, It also kind of came out of this celebrity worship culture that we have somehow adopted in our American psyche, and it was just a knee-jerk reaction to that. You know, just kind of making fun of the sycophantic interviewers that kissed the Hollywood machine. But I didn't want to prank anyone. I didn't want it to be mean-spirited. I wanted the people I was interviewing to be in on the joke. Fox ultimately didn't pick up the potential SNL competitor The Right Now Show, but Funny or Die was into it. Well, just the Between Two Ferns part. And thus, entertainment was changed forever. Most episodes of Between Two Ferns are a delight for audience host and guest. Zach Galifianakis mildly insults guests or their work, or alludes to some painful detail from their personal life. For example, when Brad Pitt was a guest on the show, Galifianakis asked how he felt the first time he saw his then-wife Angelina Jolie. Was it like one of those classical love stories, like when, I don't know, when Ross first saw Rachel? You know that show, Friends? Have you seen that? Of course, the aforementioned Rachel was portrayed by Pitt's pre-Jolie wife, Jennifer Aniston. It's reasonable to excuse Pitt if he reacted negatively, but he kept his cool. He may not even rank among the most unfortunate guest experiences in the history of Between Two Ferns. According to producer Scott Ackerman, that honor goes to Bruce Willis and Sean Penn. Apparently, Willis is an intense guy and it started getting to Ackerman. But it was the Sean Penn episode that was, quote, a really uncomfortable one. Ackerman recalled, When he threatens to knock Zach out, things got really tense in the studio. I haven't seen Sean Penn since then, but quite honestly, I'm afraid to ever see him again. <laughs> I'll knock you the f*** out right in your chair. Some of today's biggest and brightest stars have sat with Zach Galifianakis on Between Two Ferns, but easily the biggest get in show history was President Barack Obama. Producer Scott Ackerman told Insider that he and his staff had put it out there that they wanted to interview Obama because they thought, quote, it was a really stupid, fun idea. Amazingly, over the course of the next six years, Ackerman heard here and there that Obama was interested in doing the show, but it never came together for various reasons, mainly problems with scheduling. Finally, in 2014, things worked out and the Ferns guys flew to Washington, D.C. and assembled their set in the White House. Ackerman recalled, Even then, Zach's like, this is not going to happen. At some point, something's going to happen with the country, some emergency, and we're going to get word that he's not going to come in. Finally, at 5.45 p.m., 45 minutes late, President Obama showed up. I, I mean, I have to say, when I, when I heard that like people actually watched this show, I was, I was actually pretty surprised. <laughs> So why did the most powerful man in the free world agree to appear on a web show? He wanted to use the platform to promote the healthcare exchanges, the online arm of his Obamacare legislation that helped people find insurance. It worked, too. 11 million people watched the episode on the first day it went live, and traffic to healthcare.gov jumped by 40%. In spite of its simplicity, or probably because of it, Between Two Ferns possesses one of the most memorable talk show sets of all time. Emphasizing the idea that it's a humble, low-budget web series meant to look like an even lower-budgeted public access presentation, Between Two Ferns employs little more than a black backdrop, a couple of chairs, a table, and, of course, exactly two ferns to flank hosts and guests. That gives producers some flexibility with where the show is actually taped. When Galifianakis told producer Scott Ackerman about his idea for the project, he told Entertainment Weekly that he said, quote, "...give me two ferns and an actor and we'll make it look like a cable access show." That's literally what they did. Galifianakis said some episodes have shot in broom closets and other non-glamorous locations. Apparently, the Natalie Portman and John Hamm episodes were filmed in a shed, while the very first official episode of Between Two Ferns, in which Galifianakis interviewed Arrested Development star Michael Cera, was shot entirely in a basement. Terrestrially broadcast TV fests like The Tonight Show and Jimmy Kimmel Live tend to favor entertainers. Actors, actresses, rock stars, and models show up five nights a week to flog their latest blockbuster movies, album releases, and signature perfumes. Between Two Ferns, a show that exists almost entirely in the non-corporeal realm of the internet, doesn't follow these strictures and invites guests from a variety of fields, as well as people not normally seen as guests on the late-night circuit. 
Sure, he's spoken with Natalie Portman and John Hamm, but when was the last time you saw Carrot Top sit down with James Corden? Or saw Conan O'Brien share a panel with Andy Dick? Hey, uh, Papa Smurf called. He wants his suit back. <laughs> <laughs> Still, despite that breadth and variety, Galifianakis has some dream guests. He's never interviewed an athlete, for example, though he told Entertainment Weekly, I would like to do Shaquille O'Neal. I would like to do a sports figure. He's also gone on record to say he'd like to interview, among other loftier figures, the Pope, British royalty, and, quote, an older British actress like Judi Dench. Zach Galifianakis has hosted several extremely powerful guests on Between Two Ferns, including Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Tila Tequila. And although we'd love to talk to the Pope or the Queen someday, there's one influential world leader that probably won't be sitting for an awkward interview next to a houseplant anytime soon, steak magnate and American President Donald Trump. After Galifianakis' interview with Hillary Clinton became a huge viral hit in the lead-up to the 2016 presidential election, a reporter from the Los Angeles Times asked Galifianakis if he would give equal time to then-candidate Trump. Galifianakis' reply? Doing it the other way doesn't interest me. He's the kind of guy who likes attention, bad attention, or good attention. So you're dealing with a psychosis there that's a little weird. No word on whether or not he ever had plans to interview Jill Stein. As odd and original as Between Two Ferns can be, it's somehow not the first time Zach Galifianakis has hosted a bizarre talk show that sets out to deconstruct and satirize TV talk shows and at the same time make its guests uncomfortable. Way back in 2002, Galifianakis was not yet a household comedy name. He was primarily known for his work on the alternative comedy circuit and roles in box office bombs like Bubble Boy, Out Cold, and Corky Romano. Because he had a beard, he usually played loners and weirdos. But someone at VH1 liked what they saw because the cable network built a strange and innovative nightly talk show around him called Late World with Zack. Like Between Two Ferns, Late World attempted to poke some holes in the facade that is the Hollywood Entertainment Celebrity Worship Complex. For example, Galifianakis would talk to celebrities from the red carpet, but Late World would cut real footage of stars with shots of Galifianakis standing by a garbage bin in an alley. So clearly not in the same place. On another occasion, he interviews up-and-coming actor and future Hangover cohort Bradley Cooper with some rogue questions, but the audience is privy to the host's inner voice. <laughs> this is going great. This guy loves me, he really does. He really, really, really does. Late World lasted just nine weeks on VH1. Can't win them all, Zach. Between Two Ferns, the movie debuted on Netflix in 2019. How does one take a low-budget sketch that imitates and emulates an even lower-budget cable access production and turn it into a full-length feature film? Well, writer-star Zach Galifianakis and writer-director Scott Ackerman knew they wanted to do a movie, but it took years for them to figure out how. It was while filming the 2012 Comedy Central special Between Two Ferns, A Fairy Tale of New York, that Ackerman told the Los Angeles Times they got the idea. He dished, It was the first time we'd done something with Burns that wasn't just the five-minute video, and we had so much fun we said, if we can ever think of an idea that is that low concept enough that we could just set up on the fly and make something really quickly, we would take the opportunity. Now all they needed was a story, which proved tough. Ackerman told The Hollywood Reporter, we wanted to just do a fun improv movie, and then I think we got a little bit in our heads about what it could be and started thinking too much about it, and the plot got very complicated. So he left the project for some time and reabsorbed similarly sketch-based and improv-heavy movies, such as Wayne's World, Borat, and This is Spinal Tap. Then he said, quote, It just came to me very quickly of let's throw away all the plots and do something super simple. Ackerman wasn't lying. The plot of Between Two Ferns the movie is simple and straightforward. Will Ferrell, evil president of Funny or Die, demands that Zach Galifianakis produce 10 episodes of his celebrity interview show and hand in the tapes in Los Angeles in two weeks. His show's success is absolutely predicated on the fact that people are laughing at him, not with him. Zach hits the road with his assistant and a skeleton crew and grabs hastily planned interviews with celebrities in different cities along the way. Ackerman told the Los Angeles Times, We started shooting with no one on board. It's a crazy way to do a movie to not know what you're shooting. The crew thought we were insane. Beyond that, large portions of the film were improvised. The shooting script consisted primarily of outlines of scenes that Ackerman would fill in with lines the performers made up on the spot. Ackerman quipped to The Hollywood Reporter, The script really looks like a serial killer's manifesto. It just was like a lunatic wrote it or something because it was super long with just half sentences written on it sometimes. Somehow, this is just not that surprising. Sadly, the chance for Galifianakis to passive-aggressively verbally assault the Duchess of Cambridge or silently stare at Pope Francis until he feels so uncomfortable he has to get up and leave has probably passed. 
Between 2014 and 2019, Galifianakis and company turned out just two episodes. Hillary Clinton and a special segment with Jerry Seinfeld and Cardi B for an episode of Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. And while it's been a cultural sensation, a surprisingly small number of episodes exist, only 23, including TV specials. The reason for the show's quiet and indefinite demise? Galifianakis wants to quit while he's ahead. While promoting his TV series Baskets in 2016, Galifianakis told the Los Angeles Times that Between Two Ferns had, quote, kind of run its course a bit. He and collaborator Scott Ackerman still had the juice in them for the 2019 Netflix feature Between Two Ferns the movie, which probably represents the end of the franchise. Galifianakis told USA Today, There's a shelf life for something like this. We live in meaner times now. I don't know if there's an appetite for something like this out there. He added that he thinks he and Ackerman will put the show to bed after the movie. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.